We gather in Dulverton Town Hall on Exmoor for the local launch of the book Rural Wrongs. Charlie Pye Smith wrote the book with help from Jim Barrington, former head of the League Against Cruel Sports, with the welfare of hunted animals as its main subject. And it's pro hunting. We've looked at the Hunting Act. What did the 2004 Hunting Act do for the animals which, are, which were hunted? Red deer, fox and brown hare. And nobody else had done this. And the finding is it's been a disaster for all three species. So the Act has achieved the exact opposite of its intentions. It's made matters worse, not better, for the hunted species. The audience are local people. The Daily Telegraph has sent a reporter and a photographer. The locals here have had a London government tell them how to manage their deer for the last 20 years, and they don't like it. It started in the 1990s following a report by an academic called Professor Bateson. Hazel Cluley is here to represent the Vets for Hunting group Vorm. The Bateson um, report was, um, some might say, bias. Um, it, it, the Bateson report showed um, blood cortisol levels at the point of kill. Cortisol is a stress hormone um, and basically the parameters that he measured reflected um, a physiological state of stress. Bateson muddled the word stress in deer with distress and as a result the National Trust banned deer hunting with hounds on its land. A few years later, in 2004, Tony Blair restricted deer hunting to just two hounds, ironically prolonging the chase and increasing the stress in the deer. But stress doesn't really matter in deer, as Hazel explains. We all get stressed in our everyday life. This, this term stress is sort of banded about like it's ubiquitously bad. It's not. We need stress to, to make us perform. We need stress to survive. It's an adaptive thing. Chronic stress is when it starts to affect us negatively. Stress is distinct from distress, which infers a fearful state. Uh, physiological stress is an adaptive mechanism to cope with a stressor. The two do not necessarily have to exist together. There is a strong sense here that the moorland red deer belong to the people who live on Exmoor. Charles Harding had a 45-year career as a deer stalker, mainly at the Hunnicutt estate on Exmoor, which the Ackland family donated to the National Trust. Charles resigned from that job over the National Trust's management of deer. And I've been on Exmoor all my life. I know all the farmers because I do pest control. I work for most of them. And it's having that, having that communication. Communication is the biggest um, thing with uh, deer stalking and deer management anyway, definitely deer management. There's nothing more better to see than a, than a, a herd of stags grazing or lying about and twitching their ears in the summer. That's, that's what people like seeing. I like seeing, you know. The subject is not just about the animals. It's about people too. The panellists come back to the words communication and community over and over again. They fear that government is planning to sweep away hunting without thinking of the consequences for either the deer or the people of Exmoor. You can't just shoot deer on a small 200 acre farm and uh, think you're going to control your deer and have no damage. You'll end up probably with more damage because deer will be coming in at night and raiding your crops and they'll be long gone by the time they're legal to shoot an hour before sun, sunrise. I mean, I think I would say the cornerstone of, of all of our interests, and, and it's not just the hunting that we look at, it's all wildlife management, but it, it is um, you know, underpinned by welfare and preservation of, of welfare in animals. And, and as vets, that is what we are charged with um, being responsible for. So, so I, I think it's always from a welfare ang angle that we are concerned, and, and disease control as well, but obviously disease um, impacts welfare. So, um, yeah, welfare is what we are mainly concerned with. We're very lucky with the Exmoor and District Deer Management Group. You know, all the, we, we have, again, major communication with all the people, have meetings, we do a deer count every year. Uh, there's probably 270 odd people out deer counting two mornings of the year. It's a, a community thing, and then we have a good meeting at the end, and a, a drink or two, and a pasty, and everybody you know gets together, and that's where you get get the, the feedback of what problems there are. Any government looking at this subject has to acknowledge that people on Exmoor who live alongside the deer 
don't want another university theory foisted on them as policy. Over thousands of years, country people have worked out how to manage the deer for the benefit of deer and people. Labour are threatening to tighten the Hunting Act, which, for example, would get rid of even trail hunting, possibly. It's very important that they know how disastrous the Act has been and how it will must make matters even worse if they tighten it further. People are angry. The youngsters are angry that they've had their, um, you know, their, what they did on Saturday taken away from them. If on Exmoor you, you actually say, if the Labour government probably will do, we're going to even get rid of the exemption, so that'll be the end of stag hunting. What is the alternative for the deer? Greater concentrations, more TB, being shot, being poached. So I think you would have been better off keeping hunting. And I think you can have a similar thing with most things you look at. What happens if we don't do this? Will something worse take its place? Some dear old chap is probably my age or older, if could be, um, sitting there. He's probably hunted all his life. He's known deer, but he goes up there and watches his deer. And that's all he's doing, watching. Then he tells his friends, there's one with a three atop, or one whatever. And, and um, that's what they do. And then they go other places. They know up the Bile Valley, the places where you see four or five cars always all watching yeah since i was you know tiny i've always been out on my pony watching deer walk i've walked miles walked thousands of miles looking at deer using my eyes using my ears and learning their the way they travel and where they live where they're going to be with the weather um it's just part part of me the government that tries to impose its will on exmoor will have a fight on its hands to buy charlie's book there's a link below